Hi everybody. In last week's video I talked about how to promote your book as an attendee at a convention and I mentioned that another thing you can do at conventions is have a dealer's table and that that would be a subject for a future video. So here we are talking about having a dealer's table at a convention. This is not just applicable to conventions, a lot of what I'm about to say applies equally to doing say a Christmas fair, a village fete, a local craft fair, anywhere where you essentially book a plot, you get a, a table and you show up for a few hours or a couple of days to sell and promote your books. Conventions compared to some of those others are generally more expensive in my experience. Some of the big London ones can get very expensive, so London Film and Comic Con. The cheapest option they have if you want a dealer's table is just under 300 quid. If you want a backing wall, that's extra. Second table, power supply, a, a prime spot at the end of a row, these are all things which will increase the price. So can be a lot of books that you would need to sell in order to cover the table cost. And that's not even taking into account parking, fuel, hotel if you don't live nearby. It can get quite pricey. Smaller regional conventions, generally a lot more affordable, but you could still be looking at 50 to 100 quid, maybe 150 quid if it's a, a sort of bigger one. It's still quite a lot of money. That's still quite a lot of books you'd need to sell in order to make it financially viable. Other fairs, usually a lot cheaper. Obviously, if you go for, I don't know, the, the, the massive handmade fair, the craft fair in London, that's probably similar to the conventions. I don't know, I've not looked into that. But local craft fairs, sometimes 10 quid, 15 quid, 20, a lot cheaper. Now, I'll talk about sales figures later on. Generally speaking, I will sell more at a convention than I will at a local craft fair. Partly because of footfall, you just get a ton more people there. But also because if somebody comes to a sci-fi and fantasy convention, there's a good chance they're interested in my, the genre of the book. Whereas if they go to a craft fair, they might go, oh, I, I only read murder mysteries. So it, it's, you're, you're less certain of your audience in those, those small affairs. Either way, Chances are you need to make a lot of sales in order to make it worth the cost and the investment of getting a table. So one of the first pieces of advice I would have is get a secondary source of income on your table. Get something else you can sell alongside your books. Preferably something related to the books, but not necessarily. So I sell little plans. And this started, I went to one of the London conventions one summer. It was, I think, around July time. It was ridiculously hot. And I saw a lot of people wandering around trying to fan themselves with marketing flyers or anything that could reasonably be turned into a fan because the convention hall didn't have air conditioning and it was some of the hottest days that year. And I was there with my little table trying to sell my books, thinking if I was selling fans, I would be making a fortune right now. Now, I've never quite made a fortune, but there have been some summer conventions where I have been selling them by the box full and I've made half my table cost back in sales of fans. So it is something worth having, something worth selling. Obviously at Christmas fairs, not really an interest so different things for different types of fairs i also do various cross stitch things so cross stitch bookmarks at the christmas fairs i'll do cross stitch christmas cards something that's a bit more seasonal i also do quite a good trade in these little pride pride pin badges so these are all cross stitch handmade so they and yeah, I, I can sell those alongside the books and they usually do pretty well at conventions. So having something in there makes it easier to, to, to make the numbers. Ideally, I said, if you can have something to relate to your books specifically, that is great. So I have these. 
So the artwork is by the wonderfully talented Christopher Hoyle and it was done to link back to one of my books. So one of my books is all about the fight for civil rights for werewolves. So we have these tote bags that people who like the book quite like the tote bags, but also there are plenty of people who like it and are amused by the design and just want the bag, even though they've never read the book and aren't interested. So it's something that people can want on its own merits. So yes, it's great to have merchandise linked to your books, but it should be something that people would genuinely want in and of itself. So something like the fans, they are practical, they are useful, and there are occasions where actually people just really want a fan. The tote bags, again, you always get people who go to a convention, spend more than they expected, and now need somewhere to put it. So tote bags are something that people quite often want just to have something to carry things in. So something that is useful, interesting, people will want to buy it, and preferably links to the book. So having these things is great. You also need to think about how people are making those payments when they're buying things from you. First of my tips on this front is get yourself some change. If you're going to be selling stuff for cash and you're selling something that sort of has a 50p tag at the end of the price, make sure you've got plenty of 50p coins. Go to the bank the week before the convention and just get yourself a supply of loose change. Make sure the denominations of the, the coins or the notes match and are, are appropriate for the, 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 the prices of the things you're selling. But the other thing I would suggest is get some way to take card payments. I cannot stress this enough. These days, people basically expect to be able to buy stuff with a card or by contactless. So you need to have some method to allow for that. Otherwise, you will be losing sales. I can talk about in terms of getting sales. There was one convention where I was talking to a couple of girls. I ended up selling about six books between them and a tote bag to carry them in. That was possible because I took card payments. They were nearly out of cash. If, they hadn't, if I hadn't taken cards, they might have bought one book instead of the six. So huge advantage there. There've been times when I sort of been talking to somebody hey are you interested in my books and they look and go sorry I don't I, I spend as much as I oh you take card okay let's talk so there have been plenty of times when I've made a sale because I've been able to take card payments it is absolutely worth doing in terms of what I use the device I use is one of these so this is sum up and the reason I picked sum up is twofold first it works with my phone always a critical consideration so some of the the devices work only on android some work only on iphone so first thing to check is does this work with the phone you already have the second thing is this one was the cheapest around at the time that i made the decision to go for it most of these work along a similar way so you will pay a small fee up front for the device and then they will take a percentage of each sale. The cost of the device can vary, the percentage of the sale can vary. I went for this one because the, the price of the device was sort of middling and the percentages was the lowest option I could find, unless I wanted to pay a monthly fee. So that's the other model. Sometimes they will charge less of a percentage per sale, but you have to pay a monthly subscription fee to the service. And maybe if you are selling all the time, that's worth doing. But for me, I do conventions and fairs a few times in a year. It's not worth it. The calculations just don't work out in that model. So I went for the option of small percentage and I'm only giving them fees when I'm actively selling stuff. It is a very popular model. So another piece of warning is check when you're, you're connecting that you're connecting to the right device so it connects by Bluetooth and there's a, a, a code on the back of the device. Check that you're connecting to your reader and not the reader of the guy at the table across the aisle or behind you because there are usually several people with the same device there. 
it is worth getting one. If you decide you want to go with Sum Up, there is a referral program. So I've put a link in the description for this video. If you click on that link and go for it, you get a slight discount on the, the device itself. And being brutally honest, I get a referral fee. So it's win-win, everybody's happy. But it is worth getting. It's a nice, simple device. You, you have a phone app and in the app you set basically your, your catalogue of the things you're selling. So this book, this amount, the fans, this amount. And you just, when you're making a sale, you just say one of these, one of these, one of these. It does the total for you. It's really, really easy. It doesn't take much learning. And there are, it comes with a sort of simple getting started guide if you get stuck. Highly recommend it. But if you don't get this device, get something else that does a similar job. The other thing I want to say is not everybody will buy the books on the day. So some people want to go away and check Goodreads reviews. A lot of people prefer ebooks these days. So having something that you can show people, that you can give people to take away so they can look you up later, highly, highly recommend it. So in my previous video, I talked about things like flyers and advertising cards. Exactly the same principle applies here. So li little cards, title of the book on the front, bit of text on the back, link to somewhere you can buy the book. So letting it be as easy as possible for somebody to go away and go look up the ebook later. I always get a slight spike in sales about for the next week or two after I've done a convention on the ebook sales. Never quite as many as the people who say they're going to go away and buy the ebook, but hey, it's all sales. So definitely worth having something people can take away with them, some easy way people can link you to the ebook later. Other general tips smile, be friendly, be approachable. Try and engage people in conversation. It can be as simple as, hi, can I tell you about my books? Try and get people to talk to you. Sometimes they will say no, in which case just, okay, fair enough. The, I made a mention earlier of some people will say, oh, I, I, I don't read that genre. I, I'm, I'm only interested in historical fiction. So it's not worth sort of trying to convince them to, to sort of tackle a whole new genre. There are plenty of people who say, oh, I don't really read much. Let them go. If I'm there at a Christmas fair, I might suggest, oh, but is there anybody who might like this as a Christmas present? But I'm not going to push further than that. You don't want to annoy people by being seen as being too much of a, a hard sell. You're there to find the people who are interested. That said, you may end up talking to people who don't get, end up buying your book. I frequently find that aspiring authors will come up to me and ask questions about the publishing process, about how I got started writing, how I'm finding it, things like that. Some of them will go on to buy the book, some of them won't. And it is impossible to tell from the start which one's which, so be friendly to everybody. I once had a conversation with somebody we were talking for maybe 15-20 minutes. He was asking loads of questions and asking my advice on getting published. He then wandered off to the rest of the convention and then he came back later feeling guilty about the fact he'd sort of bled me for information and ended up buying one of my books anyway. So always, always smile. You don't know who's going to come back. I've also found that if I'm having a conversation with somebody, other people are more likely to come and look at my, my stall and see what I'm selling. So they're going to say, oh, there's, there's obviously something interesting there because there's this in-depth conversation going on. I'm going to check it out too. So talking to somebody, even if they don't end up buying, can be quite good because it can draw other people to your stall. This talking and being friendly applies to other stall holders too, particularly if other authors are there. I find this is a great time to talk to other authors, meet other authors, find, I've found some great books by buying them from other authors at these conventions. And quite often there'll be a sort of reciprocity thing. So I'll buy one of their books, they'll buy one of mine. 
but you can also talk to people about things like doing blog interviews cross promotion there's it's great for networking and quite often the writing community is is very supportive so just play your part in keeping it that sort of friendly com supportive community but the same applies to other stall holders because if you're there on your own you might want somebody to sort of keep an eye while you nip to the toilet it, it's or somebody might need sort of a spare piece of blue tack. Generally speaking, the stall holders are friendly and supportive and help, help each other out. So just, again, play your part in keeping it that, that nice, friendly environment. Other tips, have something eye-catching to draw people to your stand. I started out, I did posters at the front of the table so I'd take an image from the book cover, get it printed up in a sort of large size poster, stick it on the front of the table. The problem with that is in busy conventions when there's a lot of people, that's all down at leg height. And if there are lots of people walking around, it's very difficult for anybody to see that. It's much better if you can do something behind you, something at eye height. So if you get a backing wall, posters on a backing wall, you can also get freestanding banner posters so roll up banners which sort of usually come up to sort of six foot height and that you can put behind your table and people will be able to see that more easily so you want to have something that people look at and go oh that looks interesting and come talk to you on the subject of making your table look nice get a tablecloth a couple of times i've gone to an event and actually they've already had tablecloths the vast majority of times you get an ugly, stained, worn, collapsible wooden table that just looks bleh. Get a nice tablecloth, put it over the top. You can also have it coming down in front so you can hide your boxes under the table and they're not looking ugly. Highly recommended, just get a tablecloth. <laughs> if you're doing a multi-day event, get a second cloth that you can put over everything at night so it doesn't get dusty or dirty. Just keep keep everything clean. So tablecloths, definitely worth getting. Another basic tip, price labels. Make sure your prices are clearly labelled so that if somebody's a bit shy about asking, they can easily see how much things cost. I would also recommend doing some deals. So some conventions I'll do, pay a pound for the fan, but I'll give it you free if you buy a book. <laughs> I'll often do deals on series, so if you buy all the books in a series, you'll get a slight discount. I quite often do slight discounts anyway, because the the recommended retail price on the book sort of ends in 99p, which is fun. <laughs> so rather than deal with pennies change, I just go with slight discount, knock it down to the pound below that, and you have special convention pricing. That's a nice way of just keeping it all enticing because you don't want people to sort of go oh I can buy it cheaper on Amazon if you've just lugged boxes of books books there. In terms of how many sales you make it varies enormously. It varies depending on the type of event so like I said I generally do better at, at con large conventions than small craft fairs for obvious reasons in terms of scale of people but it can also vary one year to the next at exactly the same event. So I did a, a Christmas fair, and one year I sold about 20 books, a whole bunch of other stuff. I pretty much ran out of the pin badges and did really, really well. I was really pleased about it. The next year, exactly the same fair, almost exactly the same placement of table, and I sold five books and a few badges. So it varies enormously. The best convention I've ever done in, was when the World Science Fiction Convention was in London. Over that weekend I sold more than 100 books, uh, sold fans by the box load, I did a radio interview, I did a couple of blog interviews, I met with a couple of authors who we, we exchanged promotional stuff. It was a thoroughly successful event and I was thrilled with it. The other end of the spectrum, the worst I've ever done, was a local fair one December. 
and I thought there'd be a bunch of people in there panicking, panic buying last minute Christmas presents. It was dead. Huge stretches of times, there would be nobody in the room apart from the organisers and the stallholders. It was terrible. I, I made two sales in that entire event, both of which to other stall holders. <laughs> I did not sell anything to attendees of the event. That was the worst. Thankfully, that was a cheap local fare, so I hadn't lost much money on it. But you have to, to know that things will vary. You can't predict which events will go brilliantly and which will go terribly. There will always be that variance. You will also have events where different things sell really, really well. So I did a convention and the pride badges were going like crazy. I'd sold out of the, the pansexual one before lunchtime on, on the first day. This was a weekend event. And by the end, I think I had sort of one bi flag and one, one asexual flag left at the end and that was it. So I was sewing like crazy because I had another convention in a couple of weeks time and I wanted to make sure I had enough stock. And yeah, I sold one pride badge. I sold a bunch of other stuff, it was a good event. But the thing that had nearly gone in one event hardly touched in the next. I find the same with the books. So there are trends and patterns and I will usually sell more of the first book in a series than the second or because people are going to want to start with the first book. There are some times where people will buy the whole series because I've got a bundle deal or somebody who's met me previously will come and buy the second. The best I had, somebody bought the first, first book of a series on the first day of a convention, went away, read the entire thing overnight because he couldn't put it down and came back for the second book in the series the next day. That felt great. <laughs> but the point is, first books in the series generally sell more than later books in the series and standalone books usually do pretty well. So I will take twice as many of a standalone book than I will of the second or third book in a series. Patterns like that I can predict but there's always always this variance. You just never know what's going to work at that particular convention or that particular event always worth just making sure you've got plenty of everything just in case, plus a couple of spare pens for when you're do signing the books, just in case one runs out of ink. So hopefully there's been some useful tips in there. If you're getting started selling books at conventions, that should give you some ideas. And on the subject of conventions, in a couple of weeks time, I will be at the Bath Comic Con. This is in the Bath Assembly Rooms on the 23rd of March, and I will have a table in the ballroom. So if any of you wants to come and talk to me about books, come see me then. In the meantime, I will see you next week.